A good Friday, a good Erev Shabbos to all, and a happy Pesach Sheni. Today, the 14th of Yar, is called Pesach Sheni. Now, what's uh, the story behind this Pesach Sheni? Uh, so, it was the second year in the wilderness, and it was their opportunity to celebrate Pesach. And the Torah tells us in Parashat Balotcha that there were two individuals who were not able to perform the service and eat the sacrifice due to an impurity. So they come to Moshe Rabbeinu and they say, uh, listen, you know, this is not fair. Why should we lose out from such a significant mitzvah? It is the mitzvah that really represents the inauguration into Judaism. Why should we lose out? And the Almighty communicates with Moshe and he says, you know what, they're right. There is an opportunity for... Pesach Sheni, in other words, if you a person was not able to perform it on the 15th of Nisan, in other words, offering the sacrifice on the 14th in the afternoon of Nisan, and eating, eating it on the 15th, they could do it a month later. So therefore, the 14th of Iyar, in the afternoon, that is when it would be processed and offered, the Korban Pesach, for those who were not able to do it on the first, and it's called Pesach Sheni. We, in this day and age, no longer have the ability to bring the sacrifice, uh, but nevertheless, the day is a significant day. It represents, it symbolizes the idea that God gives a second chance, that if there's something that's important and you lost the opportunity, a second chance is given, and that's beautiful, giving that second chance. Now, the individuals who made this request, and really in their merit that we were taught about this idea that you are given another chance, were impure, according to rabbinic tradition, due to the fact that they were carrying Arono Shel Yosef, the remains of Yosef. They took them out of Egypt. Throughout the 40 years in the wilderness, they had it with them. They were the two individuals in charge of carrying and honoring Yosef. And that's why they were impure. And according to some, that was their claim. You know, here we are performing such a great mitzvah, honoring Yosef. Why should we lose out from offering the Korban Pesach? Now, other commentators note that, you know, Yosef represents hope. Throughout the bitter exile in Egypt, they always remembered the words of Yosef. The Almighty said that they will come that I'm going to remember you and I'm going to get you guys out of Egypt. And those words gave encouragement to the people of Israel during the most difficult times. So it is quite uh, fair and logical that those who honor the person of hope, those who carry the remains of Yosef, the person that symbolizes hope, that there are better days ahead of us, they are the ones that should be, right, should be given that merit of having a second chance and creating this law that gives a second chance for eternity, right? So this is what we are told. Giving hope is a merit, right? Giving support, giving encouragement is a schut. Is a schut that created this opportunity for Pesach Sheni. This is what we are told. And obviously a very important uh, message during times that we are looking, you know, something hopeful, something optimistic, and this is a story that Pesach Sheni could inspire us, that if we encourage ourselves and others, right, we're given a second chance. And I do deep down believe that this whole experience is about a second chance. It's a second chance that when things return to normal, we'll be very appreciative of what we have, the way we are supposed to be. And therefore, let's give chizuk, let's give hope to one another, let's act like Yosef, and remind people that there are better days ahead. We're going to get out of it. And by doing it, we're going to merit our own Pesach Sheni, that opportunity to go ahead and celebrate life and celebrate, celebrate the gifts of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and recognize Him. A message about the day itself. So happy Pesach Sheni to all. It should be a good Shabbos, a Shabbat Shalom, and all the best. Bye-bye.